there, welcome. And let's have some discussion about data preparation. We've already discussed data preparation a little bit, but I want to raise your awareness of some of the broader issues about getting your data in shape for data mining, and in particular text mining, and to think about how much work that's going to be realistically for you, so that you can take a critical look about whether it actually makes sense for you to go down this route in your research. As an example to start with, I'd like to use this Gallup data set. It's in LightSide's data directory, and it's a, another spin on sentiment analysis. In this case, uh, it's a Gallup poll. That's why it's called Gallup. And in the US, we have these Gallup polls that are they're kind of like opinion polls that are run widely to sort of just assess what's public opinion about a particular issue now. And this particular one was run about the Obama health care bill. And here we have um, a, a, um, a data set where for every person, when they make their submission, we know their gender, their age, what state they're from, whether they were in favor of the bill or not, and what they said about it. And so you can see that this is assessing somebody's attitude about something specific. Um, but, uh, you know, they could have written anything in that text um, column. Um, However, it, it is interesting uh, to play around with this data and um, to use it as an alternative data source for exploring this idea of sentiment analysis. What's interesting about it really for our purposes is that it has more than just the text and the class value. There are some additional columns as well, and LightSide can handle data sets that have additional variables in addition to the class value and the text. And later on we'll see how those can be made use of inside of LightSide. But I wanted as part of this lecture for you to kind of see how the data set would be set up so that you might have information like that. So each row in this data set is one instance. And you can see in the rightmost column the text. And there's just one a text column, and it's labeled text. Next to that, we have the class value, where we have listed two categories that each one of our texts might be classified into, positive or negative, depending upon what somebody's attitude towards the bill was. And then we have some demographic information about the person who submitted, in particular their gender, their age, and their state. And these can just be additional variables uh, or features that are part of the prediction. So we can train a model that makes use of the text features, but also incorporates these additional features as well in order to find patterns uh, that it combine both kinds of information for making a prediction about the vote in this case, whether somebody's positive about the bill or negative about the bill. Now, thinking more broadly about your data now, um, there's a challenge that you're going to have to consider, and that is, how hard is it going to be to take my data in its raw form and turn it into something like this table that we just saw for the Gallup data pool? Your data may or may not be already formatted in a tabular form like this. It may instead be in some tagged form, like XML or JSON, or it may be in a database, like an SQL database. If so, that's okay. That's at least a kind of structuring, and there are ways of dealing with this, uh, as long as you're prepared to do so. For example, in Python and Java, two programming languages, there are packages that you can import for parsing XML and JSON. So it's not insurmountable just that the data is not in its raw form ready to be loaded into LightSide, you can write a little script to be able to do that formatting, but you need to be prepared to do that. Um, there are also open source workbenches to export data from an SQL database to a, you know some tabular form like Excel or CSV. But again, you have to be um, able to do this. You have to know just a little bit about using one of these workbenches to be able to do that export. Or you may be able to get help, let's say, from somebody out there in this course um, through the discussion forum, maybe using the Quick Helper. You should be able to find people around. Uh, if you are a person who doesn't have experience with these things, try to find somebody who might be interested in partnering with you and working with you on your data, if that's of interest to you, and if you, by yourself, would feel like this was a big hurdle in getting the work done. 
But beyond these formatting issues, your data may not be segmented into the desired unit of analysis. So let's say you want to make a prediction for a student per week, but actually you have this click data and every click is an entry. Then you don't really want each entry to be a unit in your data set for machine learning. What you still what you have to do first is aggregate these clicks into units that you can use to make your prediction. So that requires, again, some reformatting, some aggregation. It could be that you need to write some code to do this. It could be that maybe you can do this in Excel with some macros, or it may be that, um, that you can do it in Tableau. But in any case, with whatever uh, infrastructure you're comfortable working with, some, some reanalysis will be necessary, some reform formatting or reshaping of your data. Smaller uh, problems to deal with actually are, uh, for example, your data may be in a non-standard character encoding and then you just may have to convert the character encoding to something that LightSide can handle. In, in particular, UTF-8 is a very safe format. And sometimes you can just read your data into a text editor and save it in UTF. And, you know, again, this is an issue where you can look things up. You can actually sometimes type in a question in Google and end up on Stack Overflow, which is a question and answer site where you can get lots of useful answers to questions like this. And um, so you can find some help there. You may be able to find some help in our discussion forum. But in any case, it's an issue that you may have to deal with depending upon what format your data is in. So if your data is text, it may contain some disfluencies. It's probably not perfectly formed English unless you're dealing with something like uh, news articles, um, which you're not likely to be dealing with um, if you're doing learning analytics. Most likely you're dealing with interaction data or essay data, open response items, and there's going to be some disfluencies. And so when you start to get into feature extraction, you may make some assumptions about your data being well formed but you need to understand that that may not be the case, and that may introduce a little bit of noise into your feature encoding when you do the extraction. It'll be more clear where those issues come up later on when we talk about more advanced features that you might extract. But it might also be the case that not all of your data is in English. In fact, maybe all of your data is in a different language. Now, right now, LightSide is configured for working in English, but it's easy to swap in some plugins that would enable you to work in a different language, but this is something that you have to be a little bit proactive about to find those units. Now, if you want to be able to plug in um, some capability to work with a different language, you might just reach out to the LightSide developers or send an email actually uh, to me and I'll, I, I can hook you up um, with those people and uh, hopefully we can, we can help you find the resources that you need. Since LightSide is a plug-in architecture, it's um, not as difficult as you might think to be able to extend to another language. But it is an issue that you need to think about. Well, cleaning up the data is one of the challenges, but another challenge is even just getting your data to be labeled. Now, in the case of the Gallup data that we just saw, the labels were given by the poll. We know how people said that they were going to vote, and then we're working on a model to be able to replicate that. But sometimes you get your data and it's not labeled and you have an idea of what it is that you want to be able to detect in student interaction. And maybe you even have a coding manual that you designed that has a set of codes that you're interested in. You've got definitions and as a human, you're able to identify the places where those actions take place. But what you want is to be able to do that automatically. Well, in order to be able to learn a model to do that, you need to have some data that's already been labeled. I always say as a rule of thumb, you need at least a thousand instances, but you may need more than this, depending upon how subtle the distinction is, or you may actually not need that much if it turns out that it's very simple. But when I teach my applied machine learning class, I usually tell students that for their term project, they need to have at least a thousand instances of labeled data. And I suggest that they set aside about 200 of these for development data, 700 for cross-validation data, and 100 for their final test set. So let's think about some takeaways. Well, it's important to note that machine learning will not do your analysis for you. You just have to think about whether you are going to be able to make enough use of the model that you train uh, in order to make the investment that you have to put in up front worth it to you. 
So, for example, if you know that you've got this data from one study, you're going to label it and then train a model on it, and then you're going to run several more studies with similar data, and you can apply your model to that. That might make it worth it to you. Or if you know that you're going to label the data from the current study, and then in the future you're going to use those automated models to be able to monitor interaction in real time, then it might be worth it to you. But if you just run this one study, and all you're trying to do is get the data from that one study analyzed, and you don't plan to run similar studies in the future, it really might not be worth the work to do the labeling and cleanup and setup uh, to be ready to do machine learning. So it's important just to think about the process, where this fits, and what you hope to get out of it, because the setup takes time and thought. And you may need to write some scripts or simple programs to get your data in shape for predictive modeling. So knowing a little bit about Python or R or Java are great resources. But you might feel that that's a little bit out of reach for you. Uh, on the other hand, as I suggested, you may be able to find other students in the class out there through the Quick Helper or the discussion forum that you could partner with. And maybe they'd be really interested in partnering with you because maybe you have something else to offer in the process. And together, if you put your heads together, you can do something great. So thank you, and uh, I look forward to our next time together.